Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So today we'll be starting off with a new chapter, brand new chapter. Oh, oh, yes. We are starting off with a brand new chapter. That is the animal kingdom. We'll be starting today. Okay. Perfect, everyone. So we today's class is lecture number one, and we will be discussing about the very first unit that is the basics of classification. Okay, in this chapter, we will be learning about the basics of classification. Uh oh, yes. After one minute, we will begin the class. Yes. So animal kingdom, lecture number one, starting off with the chapter that is the very first part that is the basis of classification. Okay, we are discussing about the basis of classification in today's class. Okay, guys. So without wasting our precious time, I'm moving on with the chapter. So today, Animal Kingdom lecture number one on the basis of classification. Yes. So in this chapter, we will be dealing about so many things about the phylum, porifera, sealant, rater, and I'll be showing you different, different images regarding all these things which you haven't ever seen. Okay. So it really be an enthralling experience for all my dear students who just watched this session okay really this is in this particular session also we'll be just trying to show different i'm trying to make each and every concept each term with diagrammatic explanation okay so without basing we are moving on to the very first unit that is the basis of classification yes guys with all your permission starting off with the chapter okay so at the very first time we have to study what do you mean by an animal always we study that there are two groups aristotle classified the organisms into two that is animals and plants right we studied in from the lower classes itself we'll be studying all these things right plants and animals are the two classification animals means that can move from one place to another plants they cannot move from one place to another plants they can prepare their own food animals they cannot prepare their own food these are the basic concepts which a student below 10th standard would say that is exactly a student from 3 or 4th standard might say that animals can move plants cannot move plants can prepare food animals cannot prepare food these are the basic ideas that we get from all over classes itself about the animals. Okay, perfect. So animals are multicellular and heterotrophic organisms. What do you mean by multicellular? So there are two group of organisms. Okay, there are two group of organism. One second. Okay, there are two groups of organism. There are two groups of organism. That is, first one is unicellular organisms and the other one is multicellular organisms. Okay, one will be unicellular organisms and the other will be multicellular organism. Unicellular organism means they will be having only one cell. For example, amoeba, paramecium, all these are unicellular. Multicellular means more than one cell. You will call it as the multicellular organism. And you could say that animals are multicellular heterotrophic organism. What do you mean by heterotrophic? The other term that you would study is autotrophic. Autotrophic and the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. What are autotrophic organisms? They prepare their own food. 
these organisms prepare their own food with the help of the energy from the sun chlorophyll etc plants are the examples plants are a type of bacteria you might have studied in the biological classification right about the different type of bacteria that are autotrophic in nature euglena is a protista that shows autotrophic behavior in the presence of sunlight heterotrophic means almost all the animals are capable of heterotrophy they are without a cell wall they do not have a cell wall even though we study they do not have a cell wall there are certain exception okay exceptions are always there but cell wall is not actually it's the outer covering which you will just get misconfused as a cell wall for example when you are studying about the arthropods you would see a hard uh, exoskeleton you would see a hard exoskeleton so don't misunderstood that exoskeleton has to be the cell wall it is just the outer covering and they do not have chlorophyll without cell wall and chlorophyll is the property of animals i hope you could hear me properly yes so in this chapter we will be mainly discussing with all these concepts that is 11 major phyla or phylums that of the animal kingdom we have to study so in this particular chapter we have to study about different 11 phyla that is in this class we will only be studying about what are the basics okay roughly we will be going through the basics of classification in the next 20 25 minutes in the next class i'll be giving with the porifera then nidaria nidaria also known as coelenterata nidaria also known as coelenterata tinophora platyhelminthes ash helminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata So these are the eleven major phyla of animal kingdom. That is, Porifera constitutes the sponges clearly shown in the diagram. Porifera, Coelenterata, sea anemone, Tinophora, sea walnuts, Planaria, Platyhelminthes, Ascaris, Lumbricoids, Ash helminthes. We will be studying in detail about each of these organisms. Earthworm, Annelida. butterfly dragonfly etc arthropoda snail pila all these comes under mollusca starfish sea urchin comes under echinodermata balanoglossus comes under all these are new terms balanoglossus sarcoglossus all these comes under the phylum hemichordata and last one animals birds reptiles fishes all these comes under the 11th phyla that is phylum chordata so let's move with today's topic that is basis of classification guys look at the wonderful majority of organisms happening around us look wonderful organisms exactly i'll just show you what all are these sponges this also type of sponge jellyfish sea anemone hydra sea walnuts platyhelminthes planaria ash helminthes okay then uh, certain other organisms centipedes scorpion butterfly liver fluke i didn't remember this organisms correctly i don't remember this particular organism okay octopus snail starfish sea urchin balanoglossus pisces reptilia amphibia aes and animals all the 11 set of phylum is clearly shown in the diagram i told you right in the beginning itself i'll be showing very clear cut i think this is limulus i'll confirm it and say okay i think it's to be limulus because it is known as the living fossil in the plant kingdom i will be starting very shortly you will be studying about the living fossil okay living fossil living fossil 
okay basis of classification this is the limulus which you will be calling it as the living fossil okay first is the level of organization second one is the body symmetry third one is the germinal or embryonic layers fourth one is the coelom or the body cavity fifth one is the metamerism or segmentation sixth one is the notochord these are the different bases of classification that we include in the animal kingdom once again levels of organization body symmetry germinal or embryonic layers coelom metamerism or segmentation notochord 2021 students i don't know anybody is there on the live chat or not so we will be discussing one by one in today's class okay so level of organization body symmetry germinal or embryonic layer coelom metamerism and notochord so we'll be discussing one by one in today's class first is the levels of organization based on the organization of cells okay first one is the level of organization that is based on the arrangement of cells or the organization of cells animals are grouped into four different layers first one is a cellular level of organization second one tissue level of organization organ level of organization and last one is organ system level of organization cellular level of organization tissue level of organization organ and finally organ system level of organization guys look all these things i am going to mark as a cellular level of organization sponge oh, oh. sponges is cellular level of organization take it down right now itself cellular level of organization shown by phylum porifera guys please 100 percentage guaranteed mcq from this chapter direct mcq will get 7 or 8 mcq okay guys you have to write it now itself that is a cellular let me check whether you have in detail about this in the next slide yes you have so here you have to study only the basic level of classification there are four levels that is a cellular level tissue level organ level and organ system level of organization these are based on the organization of the cells guys please study this also level of organization very very important guys please make short notes please make short notes on a pocket diary okay very useful for knee 2020 not 2020 mainly useful for 2021 2022 2020 students if you have prepared right from the beginning onwards it would be have very useful in your last moment preparation yes in detail we are going to discuss everything in very very detail so guaranteed mcq from this part cellular level of organization cellular level of organization shown by phylum porifera there are different organisms we will be discussing each phyla separately in different different classes so cellular level of organization so when i take the class of porifera i'll just be telling about the cellular level that they show cellular level you have to understand what is a cellular level of organization okay the cells are arranged as loose aggregate cells only cells are found only cells are found in case of phylum porifera in case as a result of evolution when it comes into tenophora and nidaria guys nidaria other time i already told you it is coelenterata In your lower classes, ICC students have learned. I know, don't know about CBSE students in the lower classes, whether they have learned about these phyla or not. If somebody, please comment on the chat box. Okay, guys, this is the first one, cellular level of organization. Second one is the tissue level of organization. Here, Nidaria, Coelenterata, new phylum, that is a Tenophora, which consists of only very less property. Okay, it consists of very less organisms only. Here, 
the cells are arranged the cells together arranged to form the tissue just exactly how you see in case of humans cells are arranged to form tissues to perform a specific function for example jellyfish for example jellyfish another example hydra another example c and imon i'm telling the examples which you might have learned or studied this is sponges cycon you plectella all these things different type of sponges are there i'm not explaining it in a detail organ level of organization here the tissues are arranged to form the organ they are seen from platyhelminthes guys you have to study that organ level of organization is seen in platyhelminthes platyhelminthes no need to coordinate okay because from the next ash helminthes onwards you could see from the ash helminthes that is the next phylum ash helminthes okay oh, oh this pen is not at all working properly ash helminthes is the higher animals don't need of higher animals over here organs are associated to form the organ system they perform a physiological function even though they will not be having a well defined structures they will be having an organ system level of organization so once again i am remembering everybody about each and every point once again cellular level of organization seen in phylum porifera guys don't worry about these certain examples you will not be familiar when i am telling so when we discuss each phylum in detail we would definitely tell and show you with the help of high clarity images how all these phylums look like or how do these organism actually it's a wonderful experience for all the bio point students juniors or seniors or whatever joining the class actually you are going to get a ride through the underground world under water under sea traveling we are going in the next few minutes okay so porifera you have to study that phylum all those comes under porifera will show only cellular level of organization tissue level of organization shown by nidaria and tino four organ level of organization shown by platy helminthes study platy helminthes only because it is only mentioned in your ncrt everything ncrt is our bible so everything comes from a ncrt only next one is the organ system level of organization in higher animals that is from round worm that is round worm scientific term only i written ash helminthes from round worms to higher chordates okay next one on the screen yes this is some of the extra basic things organ system level of organization so we have been talking about the organ system level of organization right so there are two type of complexities first one is we are talking about the digestive system digestive system is of two types incomplete digestive system and a complete digestive system incomplete digestive system and complete digestive system what do you mean by incomplete digestive system it has only a single opening incomplete digestive system they have only a single opening hydra planaria shows incomplete digestive system they have this small opening on this particular portion only that single opening which functions which name is hypostome hypostome serves as a single opening for ingestion as well as ejection of food material or food waste for example porifera coelenterata tenophora platyhelminthes next one we are going to discuss about the complete digestive system it has two openings that is mouth for ingestion of food anus for the ejection of food for example here you look you would see that this is the anterior opening and that would be the mouth this is the posterior opening and that you would be calling it as the anus okay from nematodes that is round worm from round worms to exactly up to chordate you would see complete digestive system 
so very important incomplete digestive system and complete digestive system incomplete means we have only a single opening i have shown you clearly with the help of a diagram guys this is the mouth of a planaria ingest food ingest food also through this one opening that is the mouth okay look look this is an example this is a digestive system of a round worm mouth then piercing device no need for that pharynx intestine is there ovary cuticle reproductive for everything is present next we are going to discuss about the circulatory system next is circulatory system circulatory system is also again of two types it is open circulatory system and closed circulatory system open circulatory system and closed circulatory system okay so let's discuss in detail about the primary circulatory that is open and closed circulatory system oh, oh it's not there okay guys i'll tell about the open and the closed in case of the open circulatory system the blood all flows all through the body all through the body you will be learning about hemo lymph hemo seal that is the body cavity that is the body cavity itself is covered by blood all the organs are bathed in blood open circulatory system means all organs all the organs are bathed in blood b a t h e d we say bath so all the organs are definitely bathed in blood in case of open circulatory system and in case of humans you have the closed circulatory system for with a uh, four chambers of the heart am i right with a four chamber of the heart separated by a septum and a valve are there four chambers auricle ventricle two upper chambers two so always the blood remains inside the heart plus the blood vessel there is no organ bath inside the blood blood flows into the organ inside the organ so that is an example for closed circulatory system next one on the screen yes this is our next basis of classification that is the symmetry next basis of classification is the symmetry what do you mean by symmetry symmetry usually comes in case of max so we are going to study max no we are biology students itself so biology only symmetry it is the arrangement of the similar body parts on two sides of the main axis of the body guys those who are watching this lecture live now or those who are going to watch it from the youtube after the class okay when you read out this please stand up yourself and just check whether you your body is bilaterally symmetrical whether your body is bilaterally symmetrical guys this is an example for bilateral symmetry our human body example for bilateral symmetry if we divide like this this parts will definitely be identical to this part then you take out a book cut it from the middle you will get two equal halves bilateral symmetry but book we cannot see to be the bilateral symmetry if you cut through any plane if you cut through any plane it can be differentiated into two so you can say that it is a radial symmetry so we are dividing the organisms mainly into two based upon the symmetry asymmetrical organisms and the symmetrical organism all the term guys all the terms beginning with a asymmetry acylomate means the body cannot the body cannot be divided into two similar parts for example poriferans snails etc are asymmetrical organism look this is just an example this is just an example when you dividing this this side doesn't be the exact mirror image of this when you divide like this this will be an exact mirror image of this so this is symmetric in nature this is asymmetric a sponge has no symmetry that is poriferans are asymmetrical organism a beetle has a bilateral symmetry cutting through this this part will originally be the mirror image of the later part for symmetrical the body can be divided into two equal half 
yes the different type of symmetry first one is the radial symmetry here the body is divided into two equal half here the body is divided into two equal halves through any plane through any vertical plane along the central axis or the oral aboral axis of the body guys suppose you are taking a circle like this okay you can cut it right suppose is the exact center i'll draw a line like this it divides into two equal halves when i draw a line like this uh oh oh my god guys this is a circle i can divide like this all these i'll get only similar half exactly like this when you look at this diagram it will be ultra clear for you that is suppose if this is one of the organism and you're cutting through this plane this two are the similar half when you're cutting through this plane this and that would be the half this plane this plane this plane any plane guys you can cut it and you will get two equal half so Poriferans, Nidarians. Nidarians means Cilentarate, Tenophores, Echinodermata. Very important, guys. At least 25 times repeated question. Adult Echinoderms shows what type of symmetry. They are radially symmetrical organism. Adult starfish, adult sea urchin, adult sea cucumber. All these shows radial symmetry. While larval echinoderm, larval stage Echinodermata shows bilateral symmetry that is an exception at least 25 times repeated mcq for neat examination okay okay then we have to discuss about the bilateral symmetry here the body can be divided into right and left half in only one plane that is when we take an example for a we depict a human body exactly in the diagrammatic image right having a head having two hands having two legs right so when you depict the human image like this when you cut it exactly through the center we'll get two different half we'll get two opposite half one half when you join this you will get back to this organism itself though they can be divided only through one plane can we cut the humans like this no head will depict upwards and leg will only be downwards it's not a bilateral symmetry so Poriferans, Nidarians, Tenophores, Echinodermata, Adult follows radial symmetry. Bilateral symmetry by Platy Helminthus to all chordates except to the adult Echinoderms. So you have to, those who are preparing for your board examination, please study this term. Radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry, it's very, very important. We have this topic in the morphology also in the next class when we discuss about the flowers. So at that time, I won't discuss about in detail about this radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry. So please watch it again and again until you understand everything. Okay, guys, we have discussed this already. You guys, this is an example. This is the radial symmetry. Look, they can be cut, uh, cut through only any plane. They can be cut to get an equal half. Bilateral means exactly through the center they can be cut. Okay, this image. For example, adult echinoderms, hydra, porifera, crab, hyacordata. All these shows what? Crab is actually not a chordate, it is an invertebrate. It is an invertebrate. Belonging to arthropoda. Yes. The body of a bilaterally symmetrical animal, the body of a bilaterally symmetrical animal has a dorsal upper side, a ventral lower side left and right lateral sides anterior cephalic side posterior anal or tail side suppose i am cutting this okay suppose i am cutting this particular organisms like this i would get two half one half exactly the same one half will be like this this is one half i'm just drawing the outline one half be like this 
another half will exactly be depicting the same okay another half will exactly be depicting the same exactly like so bilateral symmetry means they can be divided only in one plane can we divide it like this two hands upwards and two legs downwards it won't happen okay so bilateral symmetry is always in only a single plane of symmetry yes next one is the germinal layers next one is the germinal layers what do you mean by germinal layers these are the layers of the embryo from which all the body organs are formed embryonic layer means it is a layer from which all the body organs are formed okay all the body organs are formed from the embryonic layer based on the number of germ layers animals are of two types diploblastic animals and triploblastic animal diploblastic animals and triploblastic animals guys these three are the different layers that is ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm never care about mesoglia study these are the three main wall layers or the germ layers that is ectoderm endoderm mesoderm diplo means what two triplo means three diplo means in that only two basic levels are present that is ectoderm and endoderm and in triploblastically mesoderm will be present instead of mesoderm a mesoglia will be present in case of diploblastic organism so let's discuss in detail about this yes first is diploblastic organism two germ layers the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm are present in diploblastic animals in between these layers an undifferentiated jelly like layer called the mesoglia is also present for example nidaria tenophora nidaria you can include porifera you can include porifera porifera is also an example for diploblastic organism okay guys this is a diagram which is clearly shown in your ncrt textbook for class 11th so this is of ultra important for your neat examination several times repeated mcq so neat mcq so two germ layers are there outer ectoderm and inner endoderm in differentiate in between they have undifferentiated layer of jelly like substance called the mesoglia look undifferentiated jelly like substance called the mesoglia present between the ectoderm and the endoderm for example porifera tenophora and coelenterata second one is the plant uh, triploblastic animals Guys, this is also another diagram in your NCERT textbook and very important for neat examination. Okay, there are three basic germ layers: outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, inner endoderm. Look, ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. Guys, we also are like this. We are a triploblastic organism. So animals are triploblastic because they are chordates. Okay, our body also just looks like this germinal layers, and finally only it will convert into eyes, ears, nose, tongue, uh, different different organ, heart. So when you are studying about the human physiology, you'll be studying each organ respectively, and there I'll be telling that heart is a mesodermally derived organ. Like this, like this will be a mesodermally or a derived organ. This will be a ectodermally derived organ. At that particular point of time, I don't want even one student to ask me, "What do you mean by ectoderm? What do you mean by endoderm?" I clearly mentioned these are the germ layers or the wall layers. Germ layers, living, living, non-living layer is the mesoglia. So these are seen from platy help in this to all the chordates. Hope it's perfectly clear. Take care. Next question. Sorry, next one. Fourth one. We have to discuss about the coelom or the body cavity, guys. Coelom is another term for body cavity. Coelom. If the body cavity and the gut wall, if the body cavity is and the gut wall is lined by a mesodermal layer we already discussed that mesoderm is a germinal layer right so if it is lined by a mesoderm it is seen that it is said to be coelom we call it to be what coelom so what do you mean by coelom coelom is a cavity which is lined by mesoderm 
so it is present between the body wall and the gut wall coelom separates the muscles of the gut and the body wall and based on the nature of coelom animals are classified into three types as coelomate organism pseudo coelomate u coelomate guys the coelomate in your ncert textbook sometimes you may be having u coelomate u always means true oh oh you always means true what is this you always means true okay so okay guys look this is a gut to all and this is the coelom guys gut wall and your body wall all the space between this constitute what the coelom they are lined by what structure known as mesoderm exactly like this okay guys gut cavity this is the inner lined coelom look this is the coelom you it is clearly shown your school teachers also if they have taught this class they would just simply telling that this is coelom have shown you with the help of a clear section of human elementary canal i showed you the lined body cavity coelom along with the peritoneum okay let's move in detail in a very quick manner okay guys one second let me check how many more we have to learn in today's class yes four more as coelomate means there are no coelom pseudo coelomate means false coelom pseudopodia false feet pseudo coelom false coelom u coelomate means they have the true coelom guys this diagram is at least 50 times repeated question at least 50 times repeated mcq this dbq question please bookmark all these diagrams in your ncert itself when you watch this lecture okay so body cavity the space between the body wall and the digestive tract is filled with a matrix parenchyma that is from porifera to platy helminthes they are called the acelomate only the ash helminthes or the round worm they are not lined by mesoderm and mesoderm is scattered as pouches guys this is a mesoderm is scattered as pouches and that will constitute the formation of pseudo coelom last one from annelida to chordata the coelom arises from the mesoderm and the coelom is lined by a peritoneal layer filled with a coelomic fluid so that is u coelomate as coelomate means they do not have any coelom porifera to platy helminthes pseudo coelom false coelom ash helminthes true coelom or coelomate annelida to chordata in the last diagram i shown you about the peritoneal space and the coelomic fluid perfect next one yes guys this is exactly what when you are taking the cross section of a platy helminthes now in the diagram you it is shown in the platy helminthes there is plan area its inner body element its body will be looking like this this is the exact diagram or the cross section of a plan area so the outer layer is a body covering from ectoderm and this is the digestive tract from the endoderm so this is a tissue filled region from the mesoderm it is not actually a mesoderm lined cavity that is why you call it to be what as coelomate organism next you are casing an uh, ash helminthes that is ascaris this is a digestive tract from the endodermis this is the body covering from ectodermis and you have the muscular layer mesoderm but it is scattered like pouches it is scattered like pouches that's why you will call it as a pseudo coelom this is triploblastic mesoderm is there but they are pseudo coelom yes u coelomate that is when you are taking an annelida to chordate any organism suppose here we are taking the earth if you are taking the cross section you would see that the body covering ectoderm endoderm is there then internal organs are present inside the mesoderm formed from the mesoderm and original coelom are present the original new or original or true coeloms are present in case of u coelomate or coelomate
ओके नेक्स्ट वन यस व्हाट आर द फंक्शंस ऑफ सी लॉ इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर योर बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन इफ यू आर राइटिंग और प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर दैट ओके इट अकोमोडेट्स अ विसरल ऑर्गन सीलोम अकोमोडेट्स सीलो मींस इट्स एक्चुअली अ स्पेस राइट दिस इज स्पेस सीलोम गट वॉल एंड बॉडी वॉल दिस इज अ सीलोम दिस इज द सीलोम so seelomic fluid reduces the friction between the visceral organ it act as a shock absorber for each organ we have different different fluids for act as a shock absorber but seelomic fluid also behaves as a sieve perfect visceral organs accommodation seelomic fluid reduces the pressure or the friction between the visceral organ act as a shock absorber fifth one is the metamerism Guys, what do you mean by metamerism? Metamerism means segmentation. Okay, metamerism means segmentation. Look, their body is segmented. Look, in Arthuam, you would clearly see in their body are externally, internally segmented. It is a phenomenon. Metamerism is a phenomenon in which the body or organ is externally and internally divided into repeated segments called. metamers for example annelida arthuam etc arthropoda all these are examples for metamers metamers or segmented worms look in the diagram centipede millipede along with arthuam is shown next one last and the final basics of classification that is a notochord notochord exactly I told you right mesodermally derived supporting rod like framework of the body formed on the dorsal side during the embryonic development guys this diagram is at least 50 times repeated 50 times repeated mcq but we will not be discussing about this particular thing now in detail we will be discussing it when we move on to the chordate okay that is this is the noto chord Okay, guys, this is an order. Guys, also preparing for your board examination. Please study this diagram. This is a very, very important. Okay, noto cord followed by dorsal nerve cord is there. Then postnasal tail is there, and pharyngeal gill slits are also present. Animals with the noto cord are called the chordates. That is from pisces onwards, we will say to be the chordates. Animals without or organisms without a noto cord, you will be calling it as the non chordate organism i hope all these points are very simple and it's clear yes guys animal kingdom at a glance we are going to look once again for the last time yes ready for the class yes so we have learned about porifera cilentrata tinofora platy helminthes ash helminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata sorry up to chordata so first classification level we used was a level of organization porifera shows cellular level of organization cnidaria tinofora shows tissue platy helminthes organ and organ system but actually it shows only organ level okay no need of organ system from ash helminthes still chordates you have the organ system level of organization porifera they do not show any germ layer but actually they also are diploblastic they also comes under diploblastic nidaria tinofora diploblastic platy helminthes onwards up to the below chordate it is the triploblastic organism porifera is asymmetrical organism it's not radial asymmetrical nidaria tinofora as radial adult echinoderms adult echinoderms are radial symmetry all others comes under bilateral symmetry guys the only phylum having a pseudo coelom is the ash helminthes the only phylum having a pseudo coelom is the ash helminthes i hope the basics of classification is perfect for everyone in the class so don't forget to like share subscribe our wonderful youtube channel don't forget to share it with your friends and increase the number of members so those who are really interested or impressed by this video don't forget to join our telegram group okay if you need you can put a comment below this and i will share the link of the telegram group to you perfect okay
Okay, guys. Perfect. So, thank you, everybody. I hope someone was there for the live. Yes. Oh, my God. Everybody was there. Okay, Shivani, S. Singh are here. Uh, Pratipa was there. Yes. Very good. Ha uh, have you all understood? Have you all understood what we taught today in the class? Have you all understood what we taught in the class? Yes. Hope all understood. Yes, S. Singh. Very good. Yes, guys. Thank you. See you in the next class. Next class, we'll be taking up with the Porifera. Yes, Shivani. Yes, S. Singh. Very good, guys. Okay, Pratipa. Bye-bye. Take care. Study all these topics today itself. Take care. Bye.